We really believe that the way to differentiate is through experience and really making it simple for, for customers in general. Otherwise, you're really into a utility uh, bucket and then you compete on price and then you've got like the pattern of people switching from insurer very often. Hey guys, this is Insurance Insiders and Insights at IBM. Today we have a very special guest. We have Johan Michaud, who is partner and responsible for IBM's enterprise strategy and interactive insurance practice in North America and co-author of a white paper that's coming out very soon. Thank you very much for joining. Absolutely, thanks for having me. I hope you will also be happy after the show because I went with your white paper to a lot of insurance decision makers um, here in Europe and I asked them for their honest off the books off record opinion about your hypothesis and I gathered a few funny quotes uh, do you want to hear them I, I actually do tell me all right I try to be a, a diplomatic one of uh, the key pillars of your white paper is that you say insurers should become or produce life concierge or lifestyle concierge and uh, yeah I talked this with uh, one of the, the CEOs of a COOs of a large insurer over here and he said Robin I don't want that the customer calls us that triggers cost even less then you know becoming a life concierge and have to deal deal with a client all the day we send them once a year letter that's fine um what do you say to that the concierge term might be uh, overstated to be frank um i think it's more around how do you become relevant and how do you be at the core of the ecosystem and the daily lives of the customers doesn't mean that they're going to call you right away but how are you relevant to your point not just once per year when you get a letter but how do you become part of their day-to-day -day lives? And I think this is some example, I mean, in the US, for instance, like take John Hancock and what they've done with Vitality and how they started, like, instead of selling you life insurance, we are still selling you some coverage, but we are gonna help you like live a healthier and wealthier life. And all of a sudden we transform an experience with an Apple Watch by having constant touch during the day and helping you at the same time living a, a healthier life. So that's what I meant by that. It's not necessarily call them all the time about everything. It's how do you provide an experience where you give them access to yeah, all, all resources that they are interested in, which goes way beyond insurance and or you find another way to provide them with some insurance pro products. So that's what I meant really. I really like the Vitality example because uh, it shows, you know, how to become part of the daily life by providing value. And there are a lot of other great examples in the industry, I think, and maybe you can share one or two more. It is a paradigm shift to try to become part of the daily life while others said, you know, I actually don't want that the client even looks at the back page of the one letter we send them because probably That's it's an increased premium. So it's a paradigm. And the, and, uh, and the chance is like, as you send that letter, you also send like 10 letter of please become your customer, although you're already a customer of ours, but <laughs> that's just a that side note. Be, that can be, you have probably similar uh, careers than I have. I personally think uh, and being a live concierge is uh, the strategic move of an insurer to increase the touch points, to increase the contact points, because if you want to sell somebody something, you need to increase them because everybody's bombarding clients. And if you are there only once a year, probably the person doesn't know that you're even there. I think that's vital because there is a battle for the, the, the position closest to the customer going on, even with tech companies and other ones. And I think uh, that's insurer that doesn't do that will be reduced to a commodity and will, will get sucked all profitability out of it. So, um, you know, I had also a funny, uh, interesting conversation with that person. Deeply respect him, but that was really a, a funny one. And another funny one was a chief sales officer from one of top 20 European insurers, multi-billion dollar okay. company. And uh, you talk about it's important to go for apps and, and applications and, and digital services um, to the client, also in the, uh, in the white paper. And he actually said something like, we have a few apps, but nobody uses them. Nobody of the clients uses them. And 99% of our business still comes from type agents, untyped agents, and a little bit from aggregators. So why should we bother? So I think the message is not 
either or or, it's how do you provide that hybrid experience? And maybe it's different also for your segments where some will want to have full end-to-end -end digital. I don't remember when is the last time that I had to call someone. I want to be able to do that. But I completely respect as well that you're not comfortable in your level of coverage and whatnot, or it's like specific enough that you want to talk to someone who is advising you at the same time. So more so than developing apps to try to make it digital, it's how do you provide like those multiple potential experiences and the ability from one step to another to switch from a digital to a physical channel. And that's where really, I don't know if I put it in that white paper, but otherwise every other single of my white papers had it. I use the term digital, which is really the contraction of physical and digital. And how do we try to intertwine a journey reflecting that you can go seamlessly from one channel to another at any time? What I really like about that is, and if we look at apps, I think the main point here is it's not only about an app, you need to produce a good one. I mean, this is no doubt about it. If you have a bad manual process, man, man, a bad analog process, and you do a transform it to the digital world, it's not magic. What happens, you have a bad digital process. And I cannot count the numbers of insurance apps uh, that, you know, just are, you know, insurance folder for your one insurance, for example, that do not work, that have only, and I have done these projects at Carrier, so I know the tremendous challenges about silos and about the one sees who doesn't like the other one, so no data, so there are two apps, and all of, I know all of that, but the client doesn't care. Um, and right. uh, that's super important. And one point you also touched is the future of the agent. I always say, if you have a good salesperson, doesn't matter if he or she is in the middle ages uh, in the beginning of the century or on mars they will sell like crazy um, and what the big question is how can you leverage modern technology and principles uh, and digital services or social media for example to really scale their efficiency and scale their effect to make them feel as if there would be not one person but twin and i think that's something super super challenging do you have an example somewhere in in your experience where you said oh well that company really really did it in a good way so i can't name the client but i'm happy to explain a little bit what's going on it's really how do we from and i'm going to focus on the application standpoint it's how to your point like how do we redesign the app for the end customer when they want to be able to well they are, when they are applying so for instance like we know that everybody for car insurance is looking at competitive price. Just tell them, just show them the comparators because they are going to do it. They will be thankful that they came to your website. You might be a little bit more expensive, but show them. So that's the first thing. It's like to your point, how do we design with the customer in mind, like all those applications? But then you've got the second aspect also of for the ones who don't want to do it themselves and will call the agent. You've got that same difficulty for the agent and therefore for the end customer, right? So if the application that you use as an agent is more complex than all the other ones they could go to if they are not like loyal to you or if they are independent agents, then you make their life more complicated. You make the life of your end customers more complicated. So when we think really about redesigning the experience, we think about it as for direct, for agent, for agent to customers and sometimes agents have their own application process and then once you know like who you want to work with then you need to feel that same in information again associated with that specific insurance carrier right so how how do you like make all do things seamless and so to your point where exponential technology can help here well pre-field data and apis right so that we populate everything that we already know straight through automation Three through processing, sorry, for the for the for the actual payment automation, you name it, right? But this is where I, we we bring when we really reinvent an experience, we look at it really from a customer perspective to start with, a human perspective. So regardless if it's the customer, the agent, or any other third parties involved, but then we really look into like all those area of the process, and we just don't do a pretty front end. We look into all the back office systems which are triggered. We look into where the information could be captured through APIs and we really simplify it all. I really like the, your point that you say insurers do not only look at client facing applications that make sense, which I think is a no brainer, but also treat your agents and brokers and a bank assurance sales force as a client and produce also seamless digital experiences. 
You cannot count the times. We look at also internal processes of insurers, especially also with agent and broker processes and their programs look like from 1998. And I'm not exaggerating, but they can work it. But sometimes, especially untied agents or brokers, they sometimes use a process of somebody that, where they get less commission, but where the process just works where it's easy, where the office person does not need to uh, do a thousand different crazy shortcuts on the computer. So I think that's something totally underserved and underestimated how to leverage uh, the brokers there. So I think that's super, super interesting. The third pillar in your uh, white paper goes about ecosystems. And I also had a great quote of one of the decision makers about that. Uh, let me read it. He said, Platform economy, the next buzzword after blockchain, it will pass until next comes. We will never sell anything else than insurance as we have done for over a hundred years. What do you say about that? If you look into, you've got like successful, tons of successful models of platform economy across industries, right? I'm not saying it's everybody needs to have one, but there are some areas where it completely makes sense. And I think in, in our case, uh, we've done it in two or three areas in group benefits, in reinsurance, and in close book life. And it's really the idea of Uberization of platform of why do we keep recreating like all those policy administration systems like over and over? Why don't we build it once and for all where you can have, you can really like have personalized the front end and the APIs the way you want. But in theory, it's really the idea of that platform should be able to sustain multiple different products and multiple different needs and potentially multiple different carriers. So like I said, it's not, we are not saying that it's the only truth and it's the only way to do it, but it's definitely a way to do it. And we are definitely seeing some good examples of it. My wife Katya told me when you're going to torture Johan, then at least be so nice and bring something at the end of the talk. So what you are going to get is this legendary digital scouting cap and even more the digital scouting teddy bear. Who says, love me and insurance? I'm going to send it to you um, because thank you very much for your time and sharing all your insights. Thanks so much. Originally, I thought insurance after the fact is I can insure my house after it burned down. I was like, that's an interesting concept. <laughs> no, no. I'm curious the regulator saw things about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that business model works, yes. it sounds great to me. Um, okay. Guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wide spot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, but it's, I mean, insurance can be fun.